Miriam is a disciple of Yeshua, disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we use both the Hebrew name and for understanding, we use the Greek name. You know, the Hebrew name Yeshua actually means Savior. And so that's why when we call Yeshua, 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 we're saying save, Thank Savior, you, Savior. And so we use both names when we're out in the streets, that's for sure. And um, see, the thing is about Miriam is that she emptied herself out, repented from a lifestyle that was like mine and like yours, like every single one of us, ungodly. And sometimes I think it's easier for people who, who just find their lives as such a mess to just repent and say, Father, Father, I don't want to be like this anymore. Take these things from me. I want a relationship with you. I want to empty myself out with you. I want a relationship with Yeshua. I want that relationship. I want a relationship with you, oh most high God. You know? And I think one of the biggest problems in America right now is comfortability, complacency, and we became fat and satisfied and lost that desperation. And the Lord is calling us into desperation. I mean, how can we look and see the destruction that's going on all around us? Destruction comes after pride. Pride before destruction. And we can see the destruction of America, of our neighborhoods, of people's lives all around us, and we don't have a hunger and a thirst just to cry, cry to God and say, Father, I repent, I repent, I repent, I see the destruction. And I know it's because we're not speaking your word. We're not speaking your truth. We're not letting you flow, flow through us. And a few weeks ago, Marion was, uh, were you, uh, you, you were just meditating mm -hmm. on the, the Most High. Just in silence, meditating. Just in silence, just meditating. Just and she wrote, uh, a text message to me as she was hearing from the Lord and I wrote it down and it's right there in your hand. It says, Hi, I am your God. I am your Father. I am who is calling, calling you out. I call you out like I call Lazarus. You are not dead. You are only asleep. Wake up. I am who calls you, calls you out of all addiction and lies. O oh, deaf one, hear what I am telling you. O oh, blind one, open your eyes, see what I am showing you. O oh, mute one, open your mouth, speak what I have given to you. Blow the trumpet. O oh, lame one, get up and jump, worship your father that has set you free and has given you a new life with me. Proclaim the good news. Many don't believe, but you will tell what I have done in you. I have glorified myself in you, and because of your freedom, many, many will come and believe. I will glorify myself in you. This is for my people. I have not left you nor forsake you. I am just waiting for you. I am waiting for you. For you when you are ready to let me help you. No one else will help you like I can. I am waiting with open arms. I am the one that sees your pain, your cry, your loneliness. You are not alone. I am here. Just come to me. I am your father who calls you, the church. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Thank you, Father. And what you got out of that is, is what we, what I call the three R's, which is the restore, renew, and, and return. return. So he wants to restore us, renew us, if we return to him. Is that how it goes? He wants us to cry out, and we're not doing that. We're not crying out. We are crying out through our mouths, but our hearts are really not crying out. He wants us to fully surrender, 
so then he can take the step of restoring and renewing mm. you know but we need to open up our hearts to him because a lot of us worship him we call out on him jesus 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 but our hearts is way too way too far way too far and we need to repent that's what he's calling us for repentance and you gave me a scripture that went along with uh what you were just saying but when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And one of the things that Unity in Christ talks a lot about is that we don't understand the grace of God. The grace of God is really the power. It's really we receive power. Yes, it's unmerited favor that he made us righteous, which we don't deserve, but we receive the gift of righteousness. That's humility. That's because we have a repentant heart and, and that's really what he's calling for. He's calling for his people who say they call themselves Christians to repent, to mourn, to cry. You know, one of the things, you move to another city and, well, it was a town actually, but, and you told me something amazing uh, that you were with a bunch of men and women in a church and you noticed the men just fell on the face crying out. And when you told me that, I had to cry. I had to, you know, I didn't cry at the time you were telling me, but I was like, Lord, oh, you're restoring. You're restoring. Men are having a, a repentant heart. Men are starting to take their position in society as the, mm -hmm. as the head. As the head. And how do, we, how do we become the head, the spiritual leaders? It's on our face. You said there were men just falling on their face and crying. And they went all night, right? It didn't mm -hmm. stop, like, was it, yes. how long did it last? Well, it, it lasted, up. Um, it was an, an hour in that, in that service. And then I went again and it was just constantly. And, and the Most High showed me there that he is restoring. He is restoring. You know, sometimes we don't see it, but he, he shows us that he is. He shows us a little bit of, you know, what he's doing. But, um, there has to be, there has to be repentance, and a lot of us are not doing it. But these men were, I mean, I, I never, never seen nothing like that. I mean, myself, I haven't seen nothing like that. I've been in a church, I've been born again 42 years now, and, and I never saw that. It's always women, it's always women, it's always women, and it's like, and, and God showed me there, I'm, I, I'm, putting back I'm putting things back in order even though this world showing you different I needed you to peek through the window a little bit of it and I saw it when I went to that church and wow. I was like wow, wow humbleness beautiful. humbleness and, and it was just the word of God that they were crying out you promised this you said your word says this and this and I was like wow that is awesome men crying men falling on their face and crying and you in Christ been saying you know, we've been created out of the, the ground for a certain purpose, for us to humble ourselves to that ground, to cry in that ground, and receive the power of the Spirit, to receive a, a unity with Christ, a unity with the Most High, you know, to become one. And then women were created out of the, the river, man, to be that support system, right? But right now, the ribs are kind of just all by themselves, trying to run a, a church by themselves that they weren't called to do. But yet, somebody has to do it. And if men are not gonna fall on their face, you can be pastors and you can be preachers and you know, you can really have a, you know, a good deceiving word to the church that everybody gravitates to and say, wow, wow, hey, I want this, I want that. But no, that's, mm. That's a phony love. That's not that agape love that we talked about in the last video where it's the power of God. Faith 
It's not what we believe. Faith is the power of God to speak through us. That's what faith is. Faith is when we totally surrendered and we totally had an encounter with the Lord. And now we got baptized through the righteousness of Christ. We became his righteous instruments, you know, full of power, the Holy Spirit. I, I, I say it all the time. Galatians 5.22 points it out. You know, the fruit of the Spirit. One fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Faith comes from the Spirit. Faith is, is who we are in Christ when we surrender our whole lives to His love. Love for the truth. Letting the truth set us free. Letting the truth speak through us. Letting our lives reflect the love of God because it's not about us. We don't, it's about his servanthood. And I see that in you, sister. I see when we, you and I are together, we're out there just flowing like this river. That's why we wanted to film about this river because sometimes when I'm by myself, you're not there, you know, I, 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 feel, I feel the dam. I have to break through the dam. But when you're with me, right and you're praying and i'm out there preaching you know and uh the river just flows friday you and i were hit the streets uh i don't know we got together around 9 9 30. i know it was after five when i left we preached six different times we had two big apartment buildings and i remember right the second apartment building it had to be like i don't know it's 10 stories and and somebody kept on hollering, shut up, shut up, shut up. And you said, keep on going, brother, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And people came out in the balconies to hear, people opened up their windows to hear, and, you know, you were there, and the river was flowing, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So we did two apartment houses, preached in front of three churches, and then at the green. And then, Monday was Memorial Day, Tuesday we went out again, and somebody died at the end of that street, uh, street got shot uh, earlier that day or earlier that night. And you and I went to a place and we were ready to go in front of the church because, because the Lord wants us to preach in front of these churches because they should be open all the time. People should be standing in front of them preaching. And, uh, and I don't know, there had to be eight people or something like that in a parking lot. So no, preach right there, preach right there, preach right there, we want to hear you. So they're desperate for the Word of God. They're but they're thirsty. desperate because they feel that agape love. Mm -hmm. And the agape love is because we laid our lives down, emptied ourselves, and it's the power of God. The bride needs to renew her, vow, her vows. Mm. Because this is a new season, you know? And the church needs to renew the vows for God but in order to do that there have to be repentance we have to let the word of God wash us and I'm talking about the living word of God mm. you know the living word of God we, we have the written and we read the word but we need to let the word live in us mm. you know and in order for to do that we have to let it wash us first you know just like this river is flowing, you know, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be many things that are going to come our way that's going to keep us, you know, from 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 receiving that word. But that that word is like this river is flowing no matter what is, is just going to come through, you know, and there has to be repentance, repentance and people can repent and repent. And like I said, repent, repent hear through their mouth but there's not a true repentance in the heart we need to cry out we need to see women men children on their knees on their faces crying out to god this is serious you know and i'm learning all this stuff now and i said father just humble me just keep me humble and we need to do it you know and in order to do that 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 renewal the bride needs to renew their vows you know to the groom because in reality, we have to, mm. you know? The groom is there just waiting for us, you mm. know? 
we need to come to him and we need to renew that vow and and we need to come and and, and ask us you know, ask him for forgiveness if we did anything and, and renew that again and we need that and that's what's that's when it's just gonna go like this you know church pride became our stumbling block yes you know it, without a complete surrender to the Lord and the, an encounter with our Lord and being led by the Spirit of God we became prideful anything that's about ourselves about our church about you know just doing good works and even reading the Bible for any other motivation but for our love our love the love for the truth is so alive that man I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry why only for so I can lay my life down as a bouncer so I can be like Jesus lay my life down sacrifice my life for the truth to set others free because that's what love does mm -hmm. love you know and one of the things you wrote there is uh, it's about waking up about being asleep and uh, and the Lord gave me this. This is out of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Therefore, let us not sleep. So what does he mean by therefore? So there so, has to be something before. You know, for yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief of night. So therefore, because he comes as a thief of night, therefore, let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Which is why the Lord said to me, Church, don't pray for boldness. Pray for faith. Because faith is our, is our commitment to that love. That free and truth where we just repent it's all about him it's all about the Lord it's not about God blessing us if you have that spirit that spirit is not of God if you have the spirit I'm going to church because oh I just want to be saved I just want to be blessed I want God to bless me and my family and you know I want to be prosperous I want this I want that I is not in love Jesus never said you know he might have said I am the way the truth the life but he never says you know I just want to be blessed by God. I just want to go around being blessed. No. He humbled himself and became a bond servant. And God had highly exalted him. And first Peter, you know, or it might be in Second Peter, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And we don't understand grace because we understood grace, how it's a power of God, you know, to live in us, to work through us. We wouldn't abuse it. Because our love would be that profound. It would be that. It would be agape love. Not a phony love. It would be agape love. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. We should be abiding in Him. We should be living together Amen. with Him. You know? But pride is the stumbling block that is being taught in the church, although... They don't say it that way, of course. But when they say it's all about us being prosperous, it's all about us being blessed, it's all about our own salvation, and that you have to repent, 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 repent. Let God take Amen. these things, these weeds, these stubborn blocks out of your heart so you can be full of the Holy Spirit and become our Lord's instruments to spread his love to manifest mm -hmm. his love it's about his power his love Thank not our goodness. love for people it's about him Jesus Christ was an expression of the truth truth the truth was found in the father the truth is now found in the son and it was that expression of love that people felt and it wasn't a human love he wants us to start asking him what is the stumbling blocks that are in in my in, in 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 my way you know what are the stumbling blocks ask them i ask what is the stumbling blocks 
You know, whatever is, is, is in me that I don't know, that is in me, that is keeping me, that is keeping me from doing the things that you want me to, to do, or even the, the walk. Father, take it out. Ask him. He said, ask. And I'll, and I'll show you. I'll show you. No one else can show you. No one else can show you. He's the only one that's going to show you what are the stumbling blocks in your life. What is keeping you from... And you're going to start seeing walls coming down. Walls okay. coming down. Constantly walls coming down. And you're going to be able to say, I am free now. Now I can go renew my vows. Now I can take my position as wow. the bride. So I, if I'm hearing from the Spirit correctly, the word that you've been getting is uh, when we repent. I mean, He's calling. He's calling for us to be restored. He's calling, first of all, restoration. That's what He's mm -hmm. calling. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's saying, humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Humble yes. yourself. Repent. Repent. And now restore. All right? Why? How do we restore? By becoming renewed. Mm -hmm. You'll be renewed in me. You'll have a new purpose, mm -hmm. a new identity. Your identity would be with me, not against me, mm -hmm. Father, anymore. We are against them because of pride. We don't think so because we can have a church of 10,000 members, mm -hmm. but we're against them if there's pride. And we know there's pride if things are out of order. You know, like I said in the last video, you know, God is a, wants to restore order, which is that agape love. It's Him working it through us. It's Him being in us, you know. And then return is mm. actually Him raising mm. this church Amen. up yes. to be a witness to the whole yes. world. Why just everything else is falling around us, right? We will be His witnesses. Mm. We will return to Him. We'll be the witness that we are created to be. When the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing and mighty wind. And and like, like I said, a lot of us, you know, they think they have, they think they're baptized in the Spirit because they're told that, they read that they are, but they never had a true repentance, never had a true um, encounter with the Lord so He can send His Spirit upon Him. Then there appeared different tire, uh, tongues of fire and sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. And then I'm going to go to 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, See, the church stood up, stood up, the whole church stood up and raised his voice and said unto them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let these words be known to you and heed my words. And uh, we have his word. His word wants to come alive in us. Men and brethren, this is 29 now, still in the second chapter of Acts. Men and brother, let me speak freely to you as the patriot David that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us today. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. We are called to be sitting on his throne as we stand in faith. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ. Christ wants to renew us, restore us. He wants to resurrect himself in us through the Holy Spirit, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did it, did his flesh see corruption. Our flesh should not see corruption. We have dominion over, over the world, over, and the world is corrupt. But we have this dominion over all the sins that wants to bring us in bondage. This Jesus, God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and heard so they stood up the church of god in the spirit stood up therefore let all the house of israel know surely that god has made this jesus whom you crucified both lord and christ now when they heard this they were cut to the heart so the church cut unbelievers to the heart why because of the god you love because they love the truth and they had a counter with jesus 
Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent! He said the first thing Jesus, uh, Peter said is the first thing John the Baptist said, and it's the first thing Jesus said. Repent! He didn't say, well, you know, just say this prayer, and all your sins will be forgiven. He didn't say that. He re said, repent! And let every one of you be baptized in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Repent first, then be baptized for the remission of sins. But we reversed it. And there's no true repentance anymore, sister. There is not. And that's why I cry sometimes. And that's why those men were crying. And that's why my heart, when you were talking to me about you saw men just fall on their face and start crying out and they were speaking scriptures, I just had to go home and I just had to cry and thank God. Thank God. Thank God. The church is starting to come alive. And we are inviting you. You see, if you can't hear the words that we're speaking, it's because you're too much in the flesh. It's the truth against your flesh. Now, if you have to turn around and say, oh, this old man, he, he's by the river, he's saying that we need to repent, that we're not the, uh, whatever. And that bitterness and envy and anger comes out of you, that's demonic. Not only that you got to repent, you know, but you got to ask God to take those weeds out of you so you can be full of agape love, which is the power of God to work in us. Brother Rick, um a lot of people don't know how to repent. They think because they're in church that they don't have uh, sins that's keeping them from, you know, going further mm -hmm. in God. And that's why I said earlier, if we ask, he's going to show us. He's going to let the blind see. Then they, the blind will never lead try to lead the blind you know what i mean mm. and when when he shows us that we're going to be able to see clearly and that's when we get, we're going to be able to say okay now i know how to repent but you ask god because a lot of people it's true they go to church and they're reading the bible and they live their life and and they think that no there's things that's keeping you from 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 the beyond I always say beyond because there's this, this beyond. It's not what we're having here, yeah, churchy, this and everything is, you know, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a stronger understanding of where we're supposed to be in Him, you know, not where life is supposed to take us. And no, no, it's where He wants us, mm. you know. And when, when they start seeing and start acting, they're going to see, they're going to be able to see, you know. And then you're going to be able to worship Him. In, in, in spirit and in truth. When you were talking, the Lord just, you know, brought me to uh, Isaiah. And I thought he was bringing me to Isaiah 58, but it's right here in 59. Therefore, justice is far from us, nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there's darkness, for brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as at twilight. We are as dead men in desolate places. But yet, the Lord gave you a word that we're not dead, we're asleep. He's, and he's saying, wake up, wake, wake up. up, wake up. Repent before it's too late. And then we could be like dead man. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And we know that by the law, no, no flesh is justified. So you want to walk in the Spirit. And that's what He's calling for. He's calling for us to, He wants to restore, He wants to renew us and bring us closer to Him so we could be led by the Spirit. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry. The idolatry is such a big one in the church today where we put other things above the Lord. I mean, we just do, yes. and it's idolatry. You know, but we don't look at it that way and we don't repent from that. And that's sorcery. You know, if any, if we ever went to a witch or any had your palm read or anything like that, you gotta repent that. Hatred. We say we don't hate and we love God, right? 
But if the truth was in us, that God be love was in us, we would be compelled to tell people, Jesus Christ is Jesus, Yeshua, is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father Him. Well, I know you're a good Muslim. I, I know you're good people. I, 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 I love you and I, I can feel your peace. You, but yet, there is a truth. And this truth cannot, it's the only way that you can make it to heaven. And His name is Yeshua. His name is Jesus. He's Lord. And you'd be compelled, you wouldn't be afraid to say that because you're compelled, that's the power. And that's why God, in another video, told me, tell my people not to pray for boldness but for faith. When you get persecuted because you're setting people free and the power that it was over the people that you're setting free starts persecuting you and beating on you and throwing you in prison because they're losing control over people they have enslaved, you know, through the spirit of wickedness, the spirit of darkness, right? Then pray for boldness. That's what that's what Paul did. He didn't pray for boldness until he got beaten so many times because of the truth. So contentions. Is there contentions in the church? That's flesh. Jealousy. Is there jealousy in the church? That's flesh. Outbursts of wrath. I, I witnessed that a whole bunch of times in the church. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I have told you before, just as I'm telling you now in the time in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, you know, I just said this prayer, now I'm, I don't have to worry about my salvation anymore. It's just a fallacy. It's just what the devil wants you to believe. We've been bewitched, church. We've been bewitched, but this is what she was saying. I want to read this one more time, if I might have this. You know, she sent it to me and and I wrote all kinds of scriptures to go along with this, but we're not going to do them today. Hi, I am your God. I am your Father. I am who is calling you out like I call Lazarus. You know, Lazarus, come forth. Church, come forth. You are not dead. You are only asleep. Wake up. I am who calls you out of all addictions and lies. We are addicted to the flesh. I just read what the flesh is. If we're not free, we have an addiction. A lot of this is idolatry that we put other things be before the free and loving truth. We don't have a real deep love for this. We want to get to know them, we want to read the scripture, but our motivation is not because we repented and it's His Spirit in us, and now we have a love for His Word. I mean, oh, it's like, ah, I can't have enough of it. And by the way, I can't have enough of it. I am who calls you out of all addictions and lies. O oh, death one, hear what I am telling you. O oh, blind, open your eyes. See what I am showing you. O oh, mute one, open your mouth. What's that, sis? That's the train. The Most High is transporting. The Most High is transporting. He's transporting his disciples, his word. Hallelujah. His word is coming alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, death one, hear what I am telling you. Oh, blind one, open up your eyes. See what I am showing you. Oh, mute ones, open your mouth. Mute. You know, if we're ashamed of the gospel, Jesus is going to be ashamed of us. We can't be ashamed of the gospel. we got to be willing to suffer for the gospel because of the truth, the free and truth, the love of the gospel. It's alive in us. The word's alive in us. Hallelujah. Oh, me ones, open up your mouth. Speak what I'm having you, what I have given you to say. Speak what I have given you to say. Blow the trumpet, oh lame ones. Repent, repent. Get up and jump. Worship your Father that has set you free and has given you a new life with me. Oh, hallelujah. You know, worship's not an event. Worship, sisters, is a way of life. Amen, yes. That, you know what? I know if I, when I lose that melody in my heart, which a lot of people don't understand, but if I lose that melody in my heart, I got to seek where I went wrong mm -hmm. and ask God to forgive me. Yes. Because worship is the way of, of life. I mean, everybody should see the joy of the Lord no matter where we go, no matter what kind of circumstance, Amen. no matter where we're working at, no matter what the world has us to do, you know, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks and praise to Him as we work, as we 
That's whatever we do. Proclaim the good news. Many don't believe, but you will tell what I have done in you. Our lives are a living testimony. You know, I mean, we can be persecuted and beaten down, but yet nothing can steal that love, joy, and peace that comes from the Lord. Nothing can. I have glorified myself in you. Wow, there you go. His weight, His presence is in us. So whatever beats the body down can't beat the spirit because it's from Him. And because of your freedom, many come and believe. Freedom. Jesus said, you should know the truth and the truth will set you free. I will glorify myself in you. This is for my people. I have not left you nor forsaken you. So now he kind of turns. He said, this is for my people. The ones who, you know, turn around and say, Father, I've been repenting. Father, I've been, you know, going out into the streets. I've been doing your will. I will not leave you or forsake you. And in fact, the word that you gave me a few months ago, and it was, and I received it. And then the Lord uh, actually made it happen. Where there's more disciples are coming. You said, I heard this heard from the Lord. We're out in the green, more disciples are coming. I think it was the very next day we met two more disciples mm -hmm. or some of that, you know? And, yeah. and they're coming out. They're stepping out in the power of God, which is faith. I am just waiting for you when you are ready to let me help you like no one else can. I am waiting with open arms. I am the one that sees your pain, your cry, your loneliness you know he sees when we're crying and pain you know I don't feel pain for myself I feel pain for those who are suffering out there and I know you do too mm -hmm. you know there's so many people hurting out there and there's such loneliness out there there's people who have no family at all and you know what they'll give up food for a hug they would you can give them a sandwich or you can say hey you can have this sandwich or I'll hug you and I'll just hold on to you for like 10 minutes most of them will take that hug. Yes. <laughs> and, and, yeah, you witnessed yeah, that. I, yeah, I wanted to share one. Uh, there was this lady that um, I said, uh, she was talking to me, and, and, and she said, and I told her, I said, are you hungry? You want something to eat? And she said, no. She said, but I would like a hug. And I hugged her. I said, oh, I could give you other hugs. I said, you want many you want? I could stay here forever and give you hugs. <laughs> yeah, so it was something beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful. Because there's so many hurting people out there waiting for the children of God to manifest himself. Manifest himself in the power of God. Not in the flesh, not by doing good works, not by just serving the community. And just, you know, oh, let's go out and show the community we love them. You know, we'll have a day of, uh, we'll have a picnic for the community. And, you know, we'll give out clothes. We'll do this and do that for the community. No, they want to feel the power and love of God in us. I am the one that sees your pain, your cry, your loneliness. You are not alone. I am here. Just come to me. I, your Father, call you. We are being called into discipleship. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said, let the dead bury their own, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And you told me earlier, before this video, you know, you made a comment. How do you know? How do you know you had an encounter with Jesus? And you said because your eyes are always focused forward and never goes this way, that way, backwards. It's just focus on Him. And that's how you truly know you had an encounter. I knew I had a, a, a true encounter with Him because I remember I used to repent and do and stop doing. And then I would go back, and then I would stop, and I would go back. And I was like, God, like, what's going on? Like, I want, I, I, I want to finish with all this. I, I really don't want none of this stuff in my life. I really, truly want to, I don't want to be a two-faced, in and out, and in and out, in and out. I, wa I don't want to be in two waters. I want to be just flowing, <laughs> you know? And I remember when I had that encounter with him, 
He said, stay still and know that I am God. And I took that with me and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay still. I'm going to stay still in my spirit and know that he is working it out. He's helping me because he know that I was weak. So after that, I stopped doing the things that I couldn't stop doing. Why? Because I allow him to come in and take all that out. You know, sometimes we go to people's house and we're like, um, you want to, uh, like me, I, I like to clean. And I'll be like, oh, I'll come and clean your house. Uh, you know, but this, you want to throw things out and you want to, you know, you come into somebody's house and be like, no, don't throw that away. No, don't throw that away. No, don't throw that away. And you're like, that is so ugly. That stinks. That's, you know, and they don't want you to throw it out. You know what they do? They hoarder. They hoarder. And this is as believers, we hoarder. Hoarder. We hoarder. We don't want to let go of the traditions. We don't want to let go of, of, of gluttoning. We don't want to let go of so many different things in our lives that is keeping us, you know? Right. And, and when I had that true encounter with him that I was free, that I was like, wow, you know, he did it. That's why everybody asked me, how did you do it then? When I gave my testimony, I didn't do it. You don't understand. I tried, I tried, I tried. I didn't do it. He did it. He right. did it. Why? Because I said, I can't do this. You repented. I, I repented and this. I truly from my heart because I kept trying to stop and I went back and I went back. And this is what the church is doing. They keep going back. And he says, why do you keep going back? That was another text that I had sent you that the Most High gave me. He says, why do you keep going back? To the same things that I took you out of. Why? You know? And that's because we have not truly repented. We have given our, we have given him our all. Just let go and let God. Amen. And we will let see. Go let go God. and let God. I remember that was a little pin that they gave me years ago and that always stood with me. And I said I'm gonna let go and let God. For my kids I'm gonna let go and let God. One, one, I remember one time that I was walking, I said, Father, my kids don't, don't listen. They don't understand. They don't listen. And he says, when you start listening to me, then your children will start listening to me. Mm. Not to me, to me, to my, the mom. Right. To him. To him. You know, you. And, yeah. and this is what we go through in the church. You know, oh, these people don't listen. These stubborn people, they, they want to they wanna, uh, judge the world and they want to take the plank out of the world's eye when the church themselves have that plank, mm. you know? And right. we need to take it out and we need to see the pride, you know, it's, it's a lot of vanity in the church. There's a lot, there's so many things that I myself, the most I have spoken to me to speak, but as I, I'm new to all this. So I'm like, Father, please just, you know, show me when, how, because I just don't want to come out my way. I want, I want it to be you. And in that agape love, you know yes. what I mean? Because it's not to argue or to fight with anybody, no, but it's that agape love that's going to turn his people around yes and that's what we want to share and that's what we are all about going out and sharing that agape love even with christians themselves from yes. different denominations where we're talking to different people you know we're sharing them they're like wow there's something different about you and it's like you know what it's him it's not religion yes as a matter of fact Thank i think you, we Father. get attacked yes. more by people other christians mm -hmm. than we do yeah. the people in the world yes we do you know now i'm just gonna end with what paul said Paul says, we are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. But would you line ourselves, we will become one with a harlot. And harlotry is really our flesh. Our flesh is enemy against God. We are called to, the, to be the bride of Christ. We are called to be his bride. But because we allow the flesh and we just justify the flesh and we don't see ourselves crucified, we don't see ourselves made righteous, we see ourselves just sinners saved by grace, right? Our flesh is calling, causing us to be an adulterous. It's harlotry. We became harlots. And we need to repent because God is calling and He wants to restore, renew, and return us to be his light of the world and salt of the earth and even if he doesn't repent the evil you know that's governing this land 
and the govern this world and it's almost his time for Christ to come and put everything in order you know come with his angels and just judgment come upon everyone this church and the world we want to be called working by being one with the Father doing the Father's will love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is as our Lord is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love brothers and sisters being afraid to be used by God to speak his truth tell people they need a savior tell the whole world tell your family tell your co-workers tell everyone in love that they need a savior and being afraid to do that is because his love his agape love has not perfected himself in us and our boldness and that's why Jesus said to me tell tell my people not to pray for boldness and I don't hear them pray for faith because faith is of the spirit and the spirit is love repent allow his love to manifest himself in us has such a love for his world for his word I mean have such a love for his word for his truth that the truth compels us to move and the truth compels us to find those this is I'm gonna give you one more example then the master said to his servant so the Lord is saying to his servants go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full where are we church that's what unity christ is all about where are we 